in all its features. But we do want a little bit more space and we do want it to be quite a lot easier to fly. And remarkably, there may be something that fits the bill. It's a flying car, but updated to the current century. I'm on my way to see the only flying car that offers the prospect of reasonably easy vertical takeoff at a reasonably knockdown price. It's the work of a man called Dr. Paul Moller, and I have here a picture of one of his early prototypes. It's not a joke. It is a genuine two-seat flying saucer of a sort that might have been used by Dan Dare or the Jetsons or Bleep and Booster, depending on exactly when you were born. Moller International. Hello. Oh. Are you Dr. Oh, Moller, Moller and his amazing flying car? <laughs> Good to meet you. Dr. Moller is probably the most dedicated flying car advocate anywhere in the world. Here, he designs, builds, and tests his ideas. Moller has spent 40 years pursuing his dream of a personal vertical takeoff craft. His early efforts managed to lift a single person, himself, to a heady height of 18 inches, powered by two huge engines. While these attempts at flying might have left most people deciding that this wasn't necessarily a good idea, Moller is nothing if not determined. He looked for a smaller, simpler, yet more powerful engine, settling on the Wankel rotary. First time I saw it, I said, this is where the future lies. This aircraft is possible with rotary. Again, the combination of cost and simplicity and power all in one package. He built a rotary engine that produces the same power as a conventional engine, but at a quarter of the size and a third of the weight. But then he encountered the problem of control, or lack of it. Not wanting his craft to be the preserve of elite fighter jocks, he developed a fly-by-wire control system using this his aerobot. When this control system is incorporated into a real flying car, how difficult would it be for the driver of a normal car to learn it, do you think? Well, I think it's much simpler than a car, really, because you set your height and you decide what direction you want to go, and if you leave the stick alone, it stops in that direction. His control system is very simple, much easier than the Harrier's, and with it, his flying saucer was at last able to take to the skies. But I don't think that this is the future of the flying car. I don't want to look like the Mekong on my way to work. No, the future looks something like this.